Number 20, identify the atoms that are oxidized and reduced the change in oxidation state for each, and then find the oxidizing and the reducing agents in the following equations, and then we have letter D out of the bunch. So we're talking about finding out atoms, aka elements, that are oxidized and reduced. So if something is being oxidized or reduced, this equation has to be a redox equation, which means that there has to be changes in oxidation state for the individual atoms. So whenever you're dealing with oxidation and reduction in any form, right? And here we have to answer three specific types of questions. Always find the oxidation state for each individual atom on both sides, the reactants and the products. Even though it sounds like a lot, I promise you that it is the best thing to do to answer these crazy questions. So uh, let's take some time. Not too much, though, right? <clears throat> and you probably can do this uh, as you get more proficient and as you do more practice problems. This will come to you in, in two seconds. But I'm just going to, you know, plan it all out for you guys. So let's work from left to right. I'm going to do some of the work up here. So let's start with Zn. Now, zinc... Zn, right? It's, it's just by itself. Remember, any element that's by itself that does not have a charge in the upper right-hand corner, it's always a zero charge, okay? So that one was pretty simple. This one, since it was by itself, it's a zero charge. Now, we have to find out the individual elements or the individual charges of H, S, and O in H2SO4. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this, right? I'm going to do the method that I know two of the charges already, and I'm going to solve for the other one. We've done tons of problems try to find these oxidation states. So if you guys are new to that, you could go back in the playlist uh, to check those out. <clears throat> but I'm going to use my, my, my trend here to get a couple of the answers. So hydrogen wants to be a plus one, especially when it's only with nonmetals, and sulfur and oxygen are nonmetals. So I know that hydrogen is going to be a plus one. And oxygen, since it's really electronegative, I can pretty much bet that it's going to be a negative two charge. Okay. Now, the rule of thumb is that when you have three elements, H, S, and O, you will know the outer elements. That's why I knew H and I knew oxygen. But you want to solve for the middle one. You're not going to know the middle. The middle one, in this case sulfur, is probably not going to be the trend. But the outer ones are going to be the trend. Now we just have to make a equation to basically solve for the sulfur. Now remember... This is always, our equation is always going to be equal to the total charge. And just like we saw before, I didn't see a charge in the upper right-hand corner, so I know that this has to be equal to zero. Now, all you have to do is you have to take the charges of each one of them and multiply, whoop, where'd that zero go? So you have to take the charges of each one of them and multiply by how many you have. That's it. So I have two hydrogens. I have one sulfur. There's a secret one there. And I have four oxygens. So I'm going to say plus one times two, because hydrogen goes with hydrogen. That's a two. X times one is just an X. And then negative two times four is a negative eight. There's our equation. Now let's just clean it up, right? Two minus eight is a negative six. So I can just say X minus six equals zero. And we already know what X equals. X would be a plus six. And that's the charge of the sulfur. It's a plus six. And you see how it didn't go by the trend? That's why you gotta solve for it. So I'm gonna write my charges. H that one was easy. That was the trend. Plus one. Oxygen 
was a minus two, and the sulfur was a plus six. So I like to write all my charges above the elements. It just makes things simple. Now I'm going to work over here. <clears throat> we have ZnSO4. That looks like a weird ass S. Ooh. Anyway. So for this one, I can try to do the same method as I did before, right? That means that I should know the charge for zinc and I should know the charge for oxygen. I do know the charge for oxygen. It's a negative two. However, I don't know the charge for zinc. It's an ox it's a, it's a, um, transition metal. There's no trend for those. Now, um, let's see. Hmm. How are we going to do this? Oh, what we can do is we can identify that SO4 is a polyatomic, right? Remember those polyatomics? They will never leave. <laughs> They're always coming back. Remember that SO4 sulfate is a minus two charge collectively. So I can use that to crisscross back up. So let's see. I have one zinc and I have one SO4. This one crisscrossed back up telling me that the sulfate was a negative one. And this one crisscrossed back up telling me that zinc was a plus one. So as of right now, I have a zinc being a plus one and an SO4 being a minus one. Uh, what did we say? From our knowledge of polyatomics, we know that sulfate needs to be a negative two. Can't be a negative one. So just multiply. If I multiply this by two, I have to be fair and multiply this by two. That's how my sulfate is now going to be a negative two. So maybe I can just erase this and say negative two. And then plus one times two is a plus two. And now I know the charge of zinc. So I now know that it's a plus two oxygen, right? Uh, we can say that it's a negative two. But if you want to, you know, just double check me on that, what we have to do is we basically have to find S and O now. We only know that collectively SO4 is a negative two charge. But there's a couple of things that you can do here, right? You can notice that SO4 and SO4 didn't change. It was the same polyatomic. In the polyatomic SO4, and just like we have it over here on the right-hand side, that oxygen is always going to be a negative two, and the sulfur, just like we solved, is always going to be a plus six. But you guys can do the math if you want and plug in, you know, the zinc was a plus two, the oxygen was a negative two, and then just solve for the sulfur. You will get a plus six. So I have a plus six and then a negative two for the oxygen. And now last but not least, we have hydrogen. I could put H over here, H2. And it's a little old hydrogen. There's two of them, right? This is a diatomic. Remember, diatomics, if you don't see any charges in the upper right-hand corner, it's just zero. These, along with regular atoms that are by themselves, they have a zero charge. Okay, that's the hardest part. Now comes the easy part. Now we're just going to be categorizing. So what we have to do is we have to just see which elements or atoms change the charge from left to right, from products or from reactants to products. So start with zinc. Zinc was a zero charge and it went to a plus two. Well, that's, that's definitely a, ch a change. So I'm going to write that down. Zinc started off with a zero charge, and it went to being a plus two. Okay. Let's see. Hydrogen was a plus one, and it went to being a zero. That's a change. I'm going to write it down. So hydrogen was a plus one, and it went to being a zero. Cool. Sulfur went from a plus six to a plus six. Did that change? Nope. So I don't care about it. Oxygen 
negative 2 went to a negative 2. Did it change? No. So who cares? <laughs> um, so now we only have these two changes. Well, I have my atoms, right? It's either going to be zinc or hydrogen. One's going to be oxidized and one's going to be reduced. How are we going to know? Know your mnemonic. Leo, the lion says ger. So I got L-E-O and G-E-R. Leo, L-E-O, loss of electrons is always oxidation or becoming oxidized. Now remember, electrons are negative. So if you're losing electrons, you're really losing negatives which means that you will show up more positive. So whichever one you want to think of it as, that's fine with me. On the flip side, gain of electrons, reduction, means that you're going to be reduced. And since electrons are negative, if you're gaining electrons, you're gaining negatives. You will be becoming more negative. So let's see the trend. For zinc, the oxidation state was a zero, at the beginning, and it went to being a plus two. Is it becoming more positive or is it becoming more negative? It's becoming more positive. So that means that zinc went under oxidation. So it, it was oxidized. Oxidized, I think it's like this. Yeah, perfect. Now, can you tell me how many electrons did we lose, right? Because oxidation is loss of electrons. Think of it as a number line. The number of bunny hops is how many electrons, in this case, you lost. To get from zero to a two on a number line, you hop two spots, right? So I <clears throat> uh, lost two electrons. Now let's do it for hydrogen. But if zinc was oxidized, we kind of know that hydrogen is going to be reduced. You can never have two oxidized guys and you can never have two reduced guys, okay? One has to be oxidized, the other one has to be reduced. So hydrogen is, we'll say, reduced. But remember, reduced, reduction, means that you're just becoming more negative. On a number line, right, did we become more negative? We went from a plus one to a zero. Yeah, we're going in the left direction. How many bunny hops is how many electrons you gained? I only got to go one bunny hop to get to zero from a one. So in this case, each hydrogen uh, gained one electron. So we answered the first question. Identify the atoms that are oxidized and reduced. Zinc was oxidized. Hydrogen was reduced. And then they want the change in oxidation state for each. We just did that. It's this whole schematic here. Zinc went from a zero to a plus two, lost two electrons. Hydrogen went from a plus one to a zero, it gained one electron. And now we just have to figure out which one is the oxidizing and which one is the reducing agent. Now, key thing is that if you're talking about your agents, oxidizing or reducing agents, they can only be the reactant side. So on multiple choice tests, you know, these two answers can't, can't, be it. So it gives you like a 50-50 shot. So now we're down to this or this. One of them is going to be the oxidizing agent. The other one is going to be re the reducing agent. Just know that the atom that was oxidized came from the compound that was the reducing agent. So they kind of swap. So just make sure that you know that. The one that was undergoing reduction is the one that's the oxidizing agent, okay? So it's just flipped if you're talking about agents. So let's just put this in our head. Zinc, we said, was the one that was oxidized. So if this was oxidized, this means that the whole thing that it came from, and it was literally just zinc, right? So that means that the whole thing was the reducing agent. Reducing agent just means that you are the compound, the agent that helped the other one being reduced. So that's why it's kind of flipped. So I'll say that zinc solid was the reducing agent. And if you know that, you know the other one, right? Because just like there's only one oxidized, one reduced, there's only one reducing agent and one oxidizing agent. 
but we'll see it here, right? If the hydrogen was the one that was being reduced, that means that the whole compound that it came from was the oxidizing agent. So I could just put that down here, H2SO4. And you don't have to include the states, whatever, right? The main point is that it's H2SO4. That's the oxidizing agent. And that's it. We answered all of the questions. Crazy. But it all stems from just knowing those charges. I promise you that, you know, as you get better and better and better, finding out these charges are going to take you literally a minute, not even. Okay, because it's all about trends, 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 trends. You'll see them. Practice, 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 all right? Um, I hope this helped. Let me know if it did. Hit the subscribe button, smash the subscribe button, fall on the subscribe button, whatever. Just please hit the subscribe button. <laughs> um, but if not, that's okay. I still love you guys anyway, all right? Um, have an awesome day. Everything's ending in A. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.